Hello, we are working with the third rule. This means we are working with crossing lines to make it more easy to find a form. I would like to introduce you to these birds. They are from the Rijksmuseum at Amsterdam. I downloaded them and they are available for you as well. I want to fill your brain with some images and visual information so that you afterwards can uh, draw more easily those birds. So let's have a little bit uh, closer look at this bird maybe. What do we see? What do we know about the birds? Here we have the eye. We have some circles around the eye. We have the beak here. Uh, this is the upper part and the lower part and we have some kind of a nose here and then we have the head and we have some feathers, kind of jewelry that he wears around it. There are some feathers around here that builds the head and on the other side as well. Then we only see one wing. And here is the part of the head going over to the body. Here we do not see, see anything. This is left open. We will come to this later. And then we have more feathers going behind this branch. And we only see the toes with the nails, toes and nails, toes and nails. We have a little bit of contrast here to depict the meridian line in the body and for sure here we can feel the other part of the body's end. Let's go over to this bird. So this is kind of a silhouette from the side. We have again here the beak, upper part, again here lower part, difficult to detect. Then we have the eye with the reflection on it by the way, so this is important. Then we have the other rounds around the eye. We have different feathers for the part that goes over from the nose to the, or from the beak to the, to the head. Then we have a harnish with different feathers here. Many are uh, many forms, many details, many strokes here. We have all the details. And then we do not have a neck actually, but we have some feathers and a change of color or darkness of the feathers. And here we have this part that is kind of a chin or uh, the neck uh, here. And then we have the huge wings, very huge wings with those rhythms of feathers here and other feathers on the up the uh, lower part here maybe a shoulder then the other part of the branch and the tail with the different feathers let's have a look at the feet they are feathered as well and we have toes but no details just a little bit no details we even can't see how they work together i don't know we do not know a lot of this we have an indication of the meridian as well, so the, the, the spine. Here we have another bird, similar situation. Beak, lower part of the beak, eye, reflection, circles around the eye, lines that go round indicate with colors or darkness that the beak is something else and then other other feathers that indicate uh, the hornish on the head we have a kind of a neck we have a body that goes over to the wings and we have the wings here with different feathers different feathers different feathers we have kind of a tail and we do not see a lot of the fingers or the feet of the bird. We do not see legs, not really. We can see here the breast, 
and we can see that we have some feathers going around the head here indicating where the head is finished and where the body starts. Here another nice bird, another perspective, more frontal perspective. Here you see it's always nice to have the information of the meridian, so meaning the part in the middle of the body. Actually, it's introduced here as well when we have the beak again, all these feathers going away from the beak, then these different parts of the hornish beak, feather eye with reflection. other circles around it, feathers that take up the form and then we have the other feathers that limit the head and blend it over to the body, the breast. A little bit of another uh, wing here. I do not see the wing actually but I see the body and the shoulder and going over to the wing. But what I see here is a difference between the body and the leg but here it's not very much specificated even here in the feet not much specificated a little bit of toes a little bit of nails here a little bit of toes here but not that much okay you see i filled your inner brain with those visual information and actually, I want to get rid of this part of information drawing and I would like to draw a bird. Which bird should I draw? What is compelling? What is a good situation? If I draw a bird that has a special uh, appearance because it does something, maybe it is difficult to more difficult than if I take a bird that is in a normal position so that everybody knows because you know it already. I want to trigger the inner images. But sometimes why not uh, take a bird with a gesture that uh, maybe has gives me the impression that it wants to say, say something to me. So I take the easiest one. I think this is the one from the side. Okay, when I draw it, I start at a specific point that gives me, that is the main uh, interest of the bird. I think it's in the head. It's very often in the head. If we draw a person for sure, animal for sure, it's always the head. So shall I start with the beak or shall I start with the eye? I start with the eye and I start with little hints. Where could something be? Only little marks that I give to the paper. I do not start with the whole of the eye because actually I want to weave the face of the, of the bird. Um, and... I do it with those small marks. Okay, for the moment this is it, what I need. And now I'm ready. I feel well this bird fits to my sheet of paper. Here are the wings. Here is kind of the beginning of it. Okay, and now I'm ready for sketching. I just start at the same point, but I do real lines and I really let the line flutter. I draw some lines.
Okay, you see that I have woven now the bird. I started with some faint lines and then I worked on it and I even could work on more. Um, but I think at the moment this is it. You, see, you even see that I had very faint lines here that were totally wrong, but I just indicated a little bit so I neglect them so my brain actually doesn't say oh well this is the wrong line so leave it like it is um, maybe here this is not a nice or not a beautiful line but actually if I have a problem that I have a long line I can just give a little bit of pressure on it a little bit of more black on it and then the problem is solved so I kind of uh, can steer where the form is. I could work on it, even give more shades on it, but actually at the moment I think this is okay. So I think you have learned that you can really uh, work with those crossing lines, finding shapes around the form and enjoy drawing. I think it's a beautiful thing to draw birds because birds have many forms and we can really play around it and they are good forms to start with. Happy sketching!